Got you. Hold, hold on, let me check on. Are these my headphones? Hello? Can you hear? I can hear. All right, I'm going to well, patch in through right now. Hi, Rashawn. Hi, Sharon. Rashawn, this is Mary on the line with me as well. Can you speak louder? Oh, sure. This is Mary on the line with me. Mary, meet Rashawn. Hey, Rashawn. Hi, Mary. How's it going? Good. Thank you for joining us on our podcast today. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted. I haven't done a podcast uh, before. Um, so this is a first for me and I've, I've done lots and lots and lots of interesting things, believe me, in my oh, career. Gosh. So of all the media you've done, this is your first podcast? Uh, all the media I've done, this is my first podcast. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited. Actually, uh, as with most things I do, I don't really, uh, <clears throat> research in advance or, or read about anything or inquire. I'm always honored to be approached for media and I give myself to you uh, without doing any research in advance. So I have no idea what this is, what you're going to ask me, why you called me, who you are or whatever. And I believe coming out raw like that uh, is best for the people interested in me and it's best for their audience. So here I am. Okay. All right. Awesome. So I already gave Mary a heads up on that as well because you told me that on the phone. So what Mary will do is she'll just kind of cover a little bit of housekeeping with you, and then she's going to open the podcast and start the first question, okay? Sounds great. All right. Okay. So, Rashawn, what we do is these podcasts are 15 minutes, so they go really quickly. Okay. Sharon, did, Sharon sent you the questions ahead of time. She uh -huh. already told me that you don't know, necessarily stick to the questions, but I don't either, so that works for me too. Mm -hmm. Ryan is recording the podcast. So mm -hmm. what happens is um, he records it, he edits it. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything that we want to start over with or have cut, he takes care of that. He'll add music to it. And then once a week, he'll send me a podcast. Once I get it, I give it to my social media person, and she will reach out and let me know that we're getting ready to post it. And she'll coordinate social media activity with you. Sounds amazing. I love it okay. already. Wonderful. I'm so glad. So halfway through the podcast, I do have a 30-second ad that I read. So okay. I'll throw that in there when we have a little bit of a break, and then we'll end at 15 minutes. Okay, sure. And uh, we're ready to go. Ryan, are you ready to go? Okay. In here. Thank Excuse you for joining yourself. the Successful Micropreneur Podcast. My name is Mary McCarthy, and I am the owner of YMD Consultants and your host. Every once in a while, we invite a guest onto the show to share their story. Today, we are joined by co-host Sharon DeLay. Sharon, hi. Hi, Mary. And we are talking with her, Sean Mawani, owner of Sam's Tailors. Sam's Tailors is legendary in Hong Kong, the home of the 24-hour suit. So, Rochelle, thanks for joining us. I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, we really appreciate it, especially some of the it's afternoon for us, but it's really early morning for you. I'm an early bird, so uh, I love my mornings. The early bird catches the worm. I'm always ahead of everyone's curve. So this is another great thing to add to my adventure. Well, how nice. We're thrilled to be a part of something new. So Sam Taylor, your company, has been in your family for quite some time. Yes. You're actually the third generation in your family to be in the business. Correct. So what has been your greatest challenge working with multiple generations in the business? I think the greatest challenge uh, stems from working with both my father and uncle, who are you know stalwarts of my business. Uh, but the generation gap is absolutely gigantic. Uh, it's huge. Um, and over the past 19 years, I haven't been able to claw any of that gap back. Uh, over the past 19 years, especially in the last few years, I've realized that there's no way to scale that gap. There's no way to bridge that gap. There's no way to lessen that gap. So I sort of just matured a little bit and stopped throwing my toys out of the pram and slowly quietly but assuredly and methodically rebuilt the business in my persona um, because all businesses need to evolve 
Um, you can't stay in place. What worked for you in the 70s and 80s and 90s is definitely not going to work for you now because your audience is completely different. The people are different right. and their needs are different. So instead of fighting them and you know forcing different methods, I sort of just continued working in according to my own ethos and mantra and ignored uh, their vitriol at times and negativity and sort of steered the business into a slightly different direction without changing our core product. Just try to, uh -huh. uh, I just had to make sure that I connect with my clients nowadays. You know what I mean? People are no longer coming to us to buy suits just because Bill Clinton and George Bush bought suits from us. And I don't say that with any disrespect, you know, you know what I'm saying? In the 70s, 80s, okay. and 90s, people were flying to us because every A-list celebrity was buying suits from us. But in the last 20 years, uh, you know, the I generation, it's, it's, they're, they're not interested in celebrities who have bought suits from us. They're interested in what we can do for them. So I think that was the greatest challenge. And I think in the last few years, I've overcome that very well. I think that is probably a really good message for all of our business owners on here to hear who are in family businesses as well as the younger generations try to come in and force change upon the right. other generations still in the business. So I think that's great advice, Rashawn. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I, think, uh, I think if you're going to force change, you're going to fail. And I did fail, and I failed over and over and over again. I think you need to lead change. Okay, and all leaders are challenged, they're attacked, they're abused from head on, from the side, from behind. But if you, if you want change, you need to lead change and you need to stay true to yourself and keep moving forward without ruffling other people's feathers. And, and that's how you win. And that's, and that's, that's how you conquer the thing. generation gap. Mm -hmm. Well, you said that, that you tried to force some change on the family and it didn't go well. But um, you're known now for the 24-hour suit, not just for the celebrities that visit you. So was sure. it always that way? Did it evolve into that? Or how did that happen? Why did it happen? So we, we, we are the creator, the inventor of the 24-hour suit. And the secret behind the 24-hour suit is, is it's, it's not magic. It's bodies. It's getting a huge amount of people behind the client, a huge amount of people behind the product. Uh, and that's all it is. And in this day and age, what's more difficult for me to, to, to keep maintaining this 24-hour suit is that you just don't have this, the, the large pool, the large labor pool, the large skilled labor pool that are able to put together a great suit, okay? There's just not enough bodies around with that sort of talent. Um, so the challenge for me has been retaining, finding, poaching and grooming that talent and enough of it to get enough bodies behind each and every 24-hour suit to suffice the demand for it. And every day, multiple people show up from anywhere in the world and they demand a 24-hour suit and it's got to be a perfect suit. It can't be, you know, some piece of garbage that I've just put together. You know what I mean? It's got to be amazing. And, and, you know, I thrive on speed and, and, so does my team. And you know, when people come up and say, look, we've got four days, five days, don't rush it. I'm like, no, we need to rush it. And it's not rush. It's not a rush. We, we are not rushing. This is what we do. This is our forte. If you tell us, you know, it's Monday and you know, you're leaving on Friday. Don't tell us that. Don't tell my team that because they're going to put your stuff down and they're, go they're not going to start work till Thursday. They're going to move on to something else. You know what I mean? We are so attuned to speed and perfection um, that you know, our process works by getting a huge amount of very skilled bodies behind each and every one's suit and not churning them out because we're not churning them out. We are artisans. We just share the work and share the work very well. And uh, I've, sort of, I've sort of streamlined this process over the years. Even on the other side of the world, you guys are experiencing the exact same things that we're experiencing over here with finding talent, retaining talent, getting the skill set keeping them engaged and getting work done. So it's interesting. So Mary, I know you had another question. So one of the things that you and talk was sharing about was having a simple plan. Um, give the client what they want, even when they don't know it themselves. So 
I started hearing you talk about that a little bit about uh, not listening necessarily to the customer says, don't worry about it, we've got time. You've got your plans. I heard, I heard a lot of process, a lot of procedures, and a lot of focus in order to always keep things moving forward in order to hit the 24 hours. So how do you do that? How do you keep everything focused, everything constantly moving forward, especially if you are struggling sometimes with hiring? Um. That's why I get the big bucks. You know what I'm saying. Um, that's why I've inherited. That's why I've inherited this position. I forced my inheritance. Okay. That's why those around me in my generation, well, you know, just ran away. They, you, know, you know what I mean? Believe me, believe me. Till today, my father and uncle want to share the wealth. They want other bodies in. They don't trust me to have it all. You know what I mean? It's their tree. Uh, that they've built, um, and they're. I think they're scared of me that I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear it down because I'm a bit of a freak. Um, but that's why I am the perfect guy for the job because I'm the maestro. Okay, and it's very difficult to explain to you over, you know, a, a medium like this what I do. You know what I mean? You need to be in my shop to see me work my magic. You know, you know what I'm saying I'm the composer. I've taken the best traits of my father and my uncle. Okay and combined them with my traits, and over time removed my temper. Uh, and when I say temper, I, I don't mean that I have a bad temper, I mean that when you're young, when you're fresh, and I don't mean just being young by age, when you're a novice, things irk you, and you can get upset. Uh, and your team doesn't want you to be upset. Your team needs you to be the leader, they need you to be Superman, they need you uh -huh. to be the gladiator, okay? When you come to my shop, it's craziness. I mean, there's 30 clients and there's 50, ta 50 tailors and 15 consultants, okay? So let's do this, 30 clients, 50 tailors and 15 consultants, okay? That's 95 people running up and down, you know, you know, you know what I mean? Um, and it's my job to make sure that it doesn't look chaotic because that will scare people away. And that's what I do. And that's what I do really, 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 really well. Um, I don't want my arrogance or anything to shine through uh, when I say this. I mean, you ask a question, I give you an answer. I just have developed the knack of bringing this all together. I know which client to pair with which consultant. I know which client to pair with which tailor. That comes from 19 years of being on the job every single day. Um, and that's one of the secrets of my success uh, when it comes to managing my business, managing my team, managing my clientele. My team always turn to me um, and they say, boss, uh, who do we pair with? And first and foremost, I will say, who do you want? Uh, and then they will say, I don't know. Or, sorry? You have great videos on your website that really kind of show that. Yeah. So I watched a number of them. They were really fun to watch. Great. I'm, I'm glad you like them. I, I did see him, and I looked at a lot of his different media and coverage and some of his news articles, and you have a great global presence. Yeah. And you have a great global reputation. So I think, Harry, that leads perfectly into your next question. Okay, go ahead. What's your next question? So, I was looking for my next question. <laughs> Ryan, you can cut that point out. <laughs> Just like Sharon was saying, you have a global reputation, mm -hmm. creating suits for the likes of royalty, Hollywood actors, world politicians, and even other fashion designers such as uh, Tory Burch. Yes. Your home aim list on your website goes on and on. Mm -hmm. How does a small family-owned business end up making suits for all of these famous people and still keep its focus? Uh, yeah. Because we are real, we're tangible, okay, and we're yeah. small, and... It's, it's, you know, I'm, I, I, I hesitate when I make comparisons because I'm not trying to negate anybody else's business. But it's very simple, the answer. You come to us, there's just us. There's nobody else. You, you understand me? You walk through the door, you get me and my father, okay? And, and my team and my tailors, you know, you know what I mean? There's, you, 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 you've just jumped into the swimming pool with us. We're all there in there with you. You, you get what I'm saying? It's not like you walk into another big organization and they've rolled out the red carpet for you and someone from their glass tower has come down and someone from their factory has come down and someone from their workshop has come down and they're putting on a facade 
for you and then after examining you and examining what you need then they go run away into wherever they do work uh, and they do their work for you for us it's not doesn't work that way we truly are a tailor shop and we don't have a factory we have a workshop there's no machinery you walk in and it's raw it's as raw as it comes uh, and anyone who's shopped with us will tell you that you dive straight in you know what I mean we're an open kitchen and we have not refined our uh, the way we, we we deal with you it's completely raw it's completely off the cuff you see it happening live there's an allure uh, for, for that, you know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, human beings want that, they desire that. In this day and age, they don't want the, the makeover or the paint over, you know what I mean? They want an experience. They're flying 8,000 miles, okay? They want an experience. And it doesn't matter if they're the regular Joe or they're the Tory Birch, you know what I mean? All humans are like that, especially more so the celebrities. Especially more so the celebrities where, where they're used to having everything dressed up for them. And we are definitely no shop window, okay? We've got about um, about a minute and a half left here. Great. So I just I just want to ask you um, a final question. So Go for it. We share for, for listeners that you're in Hong Kong, so you're about twelve hours ahead of us. Uh -huh. Morning of there. Um, we appreciate you being on the podcast, of course. But it sounds like you get up this early every morning, and you said the early bird catches the word. Most definitely. The bird, worm, worm. The early bird worm. catches the worm. Um, but, you know, my question is, because I'm not a morning person, why do you do it? Why do you get up that early? Why is that important to you? What's the secret? Is that the secret to your success? That is the secret to my success, getting up early. I guarantee you. Once I started this way of life over a decade ago, everything changed, uh, you know, and my success just multiplied. I get ahead of everyone, of, of everyone here. Uh, I get to speak to my clients in their time zone. Uh, I respond to emails before they check out of their work, whether they're in the United States or Europe. I get all my work done that I can through my iPhone, and then I concentrate on myself. So I go to the gym, or I go to do yoga, I go for a run, or I go for a swim, or I go for anything that I can possibly do. I get a lot of me time, okay? I, I, and so I can never be starved of me time. And once I get all my work on my phone out of the way, and once I get my me time out of the way, then I've got my kids and my wife, and then I get to work and my clients have me, okay? They have me in its fullest form, in my fullest form. I've, I've ticked my boxes with my children and that's filled me with love and motivation. I've ticked my box and time with my wife, okay? Which has made me feel great. I've had 70, 75 minutes of just me time. I can't ask for any more, I'm so blessed. And I've gotten all the, the garbage work on my iPhone out of the way. So when I get to work, I can be there for my clients who want me. You know what I mean? They've flown 8,000 miles to see me. I can be there for my team who need me to lead them. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, I liberate them. I want them to be creative. I want them to be free. But ultimately, they can only do so knowing that I'm in their corner. And I get to be there for my tailors who want to do exciting things, who want to do stuff outside of the box. But they still fear... Uh, you know, stuff falling to bits and I'm there to, to erase that fear or to pick up the bits if they do fall apart. So the early bird catches the worm. Those are my worms and I make sure they get caught every morning, every single day, seven days a week. Well, I have to say that is really good advice for listening. Great. Right. I haven't necessarily wanted to get up that early in the morning, but you made a really good case for me to change that, I'll tell you. Thank you. So, I would like to thank Sharon and, and Rashawn Malawi for joining us today. So his contact information will be posted along with his podcast on our website, thesuccessfulmicropreneur.com. I also would highly recommend that if you are in the area or heading to Hong Kong, you definitely want to put this on your to-do list because I would love to see that workroom in person, wouldn't you, Sharon? Oh, yeah. Let's go make our flights right now. Okay. We'll, do, we'll work on that. So thank you for listening to the Successful Micropreneur Podcast. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher, like us on Facebook, and share our podcast link with all of your micro business owner friends. Thank you again for joining us today. My name is Mary McCarthy, owner of YMG Consultants. We're starting a business is tough. Failing a business is unnecessary. Okay, we are done. That goes so fast, doesn't it, Rashawn? That was awesome. Yes, it goes so fast. It goes very fast. So the I hope thing is Ryan does an amazing job with cleaning things up, making it sound beautiful, it'll sm or flow smoothly, 
And when it's ready to go, I'll send you a link. You may hear from Shauna as well from us, who will give you a link. You can load it to your website. You can direct people to our website, which we would love. Yes, I will definitely do that. You, you give me what you want, and you tell me what you want me to do, and I will do it. And I want to personally thank you for how amazing you've been with responding and being very timely and lovely about this whole thing and not bad for finding somebody through an entrepreneur magazine article that is my forte and i am grateful to you for noticing that but moreover i am so thankful to you for this opportunity this is yet another wonderful thing in my blessed life my adventures continue thank you for making this happen for me you're amazing Where you are amazing have a wonderful rest of the week. I am going to have an amazing rest of the week. I promise you that. I, I live a right, blessed, I'll blessed life. Up. All right. I'll follow up soon, okay? Sure. God bless you guys. Thank you for this. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. And there we go. Roshan's adventures continue. God, life is great. Uh, speak to you all soon. Bye.